Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. Today I would like to review some apps which may be beneficial for the purpose of preparedness, survival, grid down scenarios, etc. So for this review, I'm going to be uh, doing the demonstration utilizing a Galaxy Note 2. The Galaxy Note 2 is an Android operating system device. Right now I have it encased in a VW Tech crush proof, waterproof, everything proof case. If you want information about where to get that case, I believe it is probably one of the best cases next to the Otterbox Survivor, which they don't make for this phone. Now, one of the reasons why I choose Android phones, not just necessarily Android phones, but uh, just a few tips on what you might want to look for when getting a smartphone. For one, it should have the opportunity to take micro SD cards. Most Samsung phones allow for that, and it should go out with say, without saying why you would want that. You wouldn't want to be entirely dependent on cloud-based services where your information is stored in remote servers, which you may not be able to access when the grid, if and when the grid goes down. So that's number one. And the great thing about those micro SD cards is that they're incredibly small. Um, the most up to date, uh, the most cutting edge technology available right now boasts 128 gigabytes on something that's the size of a pinky fingernail. So definitely something to look into. Another thing you want is a battery that can be taken out and replaced easily and uh, basically you want a phone that has a removable backing and most Samsung phones permit that the reason why you want that is obvious the charge cycles on a lithium-ion battery are limited to about 200 to 300 to a point where the degradation of the battery becomes too noticeable and the battery is just going to drain too quick so something else to consider those are that's all really going to say about you know uh, this isn't really a, a video to promote Samsung or anything like that get any phone that has those two main features and I think you'll be okay so I want to talk uh, comprehensively about various applications that I've found useful in terms of you know just general everyday use and potentially for an SHTF scenario so this video may be quite long but at the same time I think it's it might be uh, hopefully it's useful to some people and I have a feeling that there's going to be a lot of apps discussed here which you haven't seen before and I've used all these apps I've tried them I've tested them so I can vouch for them for the most part so I'm gonna start uh, down below here this is a app called and we're gonna start with the medical apps this is an app called how are you feeling it's called how are you I used it uh, once to track pain. So if you do suffer an injury in a you know poop hits the fan scenario, you can track the progress of it, and you can cross correlate this with other things, other information, and to see whether or not things are improving, troubleshoot, etc. So that's one app. I'm just going to go through a lot of these very briefly for the sake of saving time. Uh, Runtastic Heart Rate is also another great app. It utilizes the camera's flash there, and you put your finger over it, and it uh, gets a reading of your heart rate. Now, unfortunately, the case that I'm using right now won't permit something about the glass interfering with the, the sensor on the back, but there are actually, on the S4, the Galaxy S5, I should say, actually has a heart rate sensor, a dedicated heart rate sensor, which honestly isn't a lot different than this um, than this program here. And I'll just show you to give you an example of the history. 
my heart rates. Some of them are pretty low because I do a lot of cardio. And so, you know, good for for medical purposes, uh, biofeedback, um, stress management, stuff like that. Could serve a lot of uses there. Fit Notes is another application. I'm not really going to talk too much about it, but I guarantee you it is hands down the best fitness application that you can get, and it's free. There's no ads. The creator of it, I've pretty much begged him to take five bucks as a donation, but you know he simply isn't interested. Uh, great guy who who uh, makes the program. He'll always respond to your feedback. Uh, it's a great program. Basically, allows you to track exercise progress. It will sh get, provide you with graphs, just to give you an example here. Um, you pick an exercise and shows you your history, your one rep max, and it's very simple to use. It's very clean. It's not like you know a bunch of crap all over the place that gets in the way. And it's just a a great app. One of the best workout apps hands down uh, fat secret this one might be useful in a you know what situation for the purpose of tracking calories and even beforehand if you wanted to you know make sure that you're meeting your caloric needs now obviously you could do that with pen and paper this isn't necessarily required I use it it's a weight optimization tool keeps track of your exercise that's one other app that I will vouch for that I use every day. Anatomical apps, I'm not going to talk about all of them, but as you can see here there is uh, visual muscles, visual anatomy, human bones, um, eye cell and heart tab. Some of these apps provide you know 3D, um, oh, this one's going to be a little sideways, maybe I can just turn the phone and it'll work, there we go. Uh, let me see here move that over so you can see this is the human heart lots of it is educational to some extent so it shows you you know the heart and you can kind of see how it functions and there's different options you can kind of see inside the heart see how the ventricles work see which way the blood flows and the various functions you can zoom in there's other options you can zoom like into the uh, zoom into the actual veins and see what's going on and it shows you you know like what hypertension looks like on a cellular level and this and that so that's uh, an interesting app let's move my screen back here for you center that there we go and a lot of those anatomy apps are like that um, I do have Gray's Anatomy on here, and uh, just to give you an example of the visual anatomy, you can go in, there's all the different parts, muscles, circulation, digestive, you know, nervous system, skeletal, and you can view things in 3D. Not all of these apps are free. Some of them require a five buck investment, but for me, you know, I think that like, if you're going to spend five bucks on you know, pop and chips, why can't you spend five bucks on something that's going to be educational, right? So anatomical apps would be a great addition to your to your uh, mobile first aid preparedness. Figure one is one I just picked up recently. It takes pictures from all over the world of, uh, it's mostly a tool to be used by doctors, but you know, uh, I wanted to know what MERS look like from a, like inside the lungs, what it, what it resembled. And if you want to learn about different diseases and what to look for and symptomology and what certain things look for, it's kind of a, not necessarily the most appealing app to look at, but figure one is a great app. Um, Red Cross puts out a baby and child first aid. I'm not really going to talk too much about it it's right there Red Cross first aid now a lot of the thing I have against these Red Cross first aid apps is a lot of them are just trying to get you you know to a point where 
you can maintain um, somebody or stabilize, keep somebody stabilized until help arrives. Well, what if help isn't going to arrive? Then you can get this. This is the survival medicine manual, and it's great. It's so comprehensive. This is kind of what you would use if you knew help wasn't coming. Dr. Bones has a book out also that I'm going to pick up. Um, just because he was so nice to put all that information out there for free, I feel that, you know, uh, I don't mind buying his book because I have a feeling it's going to be pretty good because it is from a prepper's nobody's coming to help you perspective. So this is the book. You basically download the app and it gives you this 200-page book, Survival and Austere Medicine. And it just goes, I'll show you some of the topics. I haven't read it, honestly, but I can just tell by looking at, you know, a lot of the topics that it really is a compendium of you know of information and not just general medical information but as it applies to prepping women's health issues medical aspects of NBC warfare dental trauma so that one is called Survival Medicine. And just so you know, I will post all the links to these uh, apps in the description box. Another uh, useful app is your Vitamin Mineral Guide. And this app just sort of helps you, tells you what, you know, the various vitamins do and what their functions are and gives you a bit of a rundown there. Stuff you could find on Google, but you know, if you don't have Google and the grid's down, it's nice to know. And it tells you where you can get those uh, nutrients and minerals, so it's also a useful app. Uh, the Hazmat Pocket Guide, it just sort of, you know, tells you all the WIMIS uh, classifications, uh, the, you know, what... Uh, you know, the symbols, what they mean, stuff like that. So it could possibly be useful if you were uh, found yourself in uh, a NBC type situation. It gives you the different ratings and what they mean exactly, stuff like that. And there is also this first aid, general first aid that I'm not really going to talk too much about. It's very similar to the infant uh, Red Cross First Aid, British Red Cross, and very basic stuff. You're not going to get a whole lot from that, but it will help you out. There is also eye triage, one that Urban Prepper uses, and it is uh, effective. I think it took it off my phone because it was doing a lot of background stuff that I didn't really like and was draining my battery, but eye triage is also another useful one it lists off all the medications and what they do and stuff like that so that could be useful now one of my goals one of the apps that I'm seeking is something that I can use to inventory preps so something I can use to basically keep track of what I have and perhaps keep track of food expiration dates and stuff like that I've been exploring some apps um, one is my acid bin. I think it's it's actually one of those things where they they taunt you with the you know with the product and then they get you to buy a new one. But essentially, what it does is it gets you to take pictures of your stuff. It's kind of for insurance purposes, but it also works for prepping purposes. Uh, you take pictures of your stuff. You say how much you have. You write a description. You provide serial numbers, stuff like that. Um, another app is Food Inventory, so you can, it's a very easy to use app to inventory food, and I believe you can, um, I believe you can log the expiration dates and stuff like that. There are a couple other apps that I'm going to explore to that end. Camping Checklist is another app uh, that's customizable checklist, essentially. It's not just for camping. You can make your own categories. And um, so really, if you, you know, were in a situation where, you know, you needed to be thorough and 
you wanted to make sure that everybody you know had certain things and you wanted to stay organized this camping checklist app has gotten uh, a lot of good reviews and not only just from the general population but from preppers so that's taking me to the play store all right so getting more into the navigational stuff so first and foremost a moon uh, phase of the moon widget widget which you know could be useful to know when you know the next full moon is going to be um, stuff like that very basic type um, application uh, GPS status I don't think I have my GPS turned on here I do now which is probably not going to work anyways because I'm indoors but GPS status this is a, a great app it just shows you you know your orientation um, the magnetic field the altitude um, things of that nature so all the sort of GPS related stuff that you might need the GPS tracker is a family tracking device so if you have kids and you have uh, significant others with cell phones you can kind of know their whereabouts at all times obviously with all these apps there's going to be big brother ramifications just in the simple fact of possessing a cell phone you give the powers that be the ability to track you hear you see you at all times through two cameras in most phones so that's something to consider I'm not naive to that reality. Um, meteorological apps. Uh, first one I'm going to talk about, get the basic ones out of the way. Luna Soul Cal is just uh, basically it tells you when the sun's going to rise and when it's going to set. And it sells, tells you that into the future, into infinity essentially. So if you want to know when the sun's going to rise and end on June 21st in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, well, 4.46 a.m. to 9.31 p.m. So that's going to be a long day. Actually, it's going to be the longest day of the year. Well, actually, it looks like July, June 22nd will be the longest day of the year, and then it starts to go back the other way. Yeah. So let's not think about that. Um, Sun Surveyor is an interesting app. So it's basically, it shows you using augmented reality where the sun is going to rise so depending on where the sun is you can't really see it here um, but it does sort of show you the orientation of the sun in augmented reality depending on which way you point your phone and stuff like that it uses the gyroscope and accelerometer in order to determine that with that phone or with that app, you can also check out where it's going to be in relation to uh, the map or your orientation in space, depending on where you point the device. Right now, I'm tilting the device all over, as you can see. So when I change it, the orientation changes. So a very interesting app if you're planning on growing crops or you know laying down solar panels and you want to know. How to maximize your uh, solar input that could be useful. Mateo Earth is another interesting application which gives you a different sort of perspective on weather and provides you with a bit more information than just a general weather app. Obviously it's grid dependent so um, you know you can't really expect to use it when the grid is down. What we're looking at here is uh, is uh, wind so it's showing us the wind patterns and this is all in real time so if I wanted to zoom into my city I wanted to know which way the wind was blowing right now I could zoom in there and depending on the direction of the flow of those blue dots that you may or may not be able to see on the camera Let's see if I can zoom in enough so you can see it looks like there isn't a whole lot of wind where I'm at right now so there's not a whole lot of movement but you know just to give you an idea you know you can see like in the ocean over here a lot of lag right now so you can see the the movement of the wind so it shows you the currents and the trade winds and stuff like that uh, there's lots of different things there's cloud cover there's precipitation um, 
So if I zoom out, it will show me where it's raining and the yellow parts are where it's really raining and it shows the heat you can zoom out so it's an interesting global you know for for evaluating the uh, weather globally but also locally it does have some benefits so i definitely have used it um, namely for wind direction other apps like that are earth now it's also another real-time app. I'm not going to really talk about that one too much. Um, navigationally, from a more cosmic perspective, Google Sky is useful. Sky Safari is very similar to that. Most phones, most Samsung phones have barometers now. So you need to have the barometer on your phone. This is not going to work unless the actual barometer sensor is in your phone. But that's another useful app. Um, Maps measure is, is useful. So it lets you measure the points on a map. So if I wanted to, you know, measure uh, the distance a certain area, I could do that with relative ease. 4D Compass is another useful application. And so with this app, we'll show you the phone just while we do this. And it's augmented reality. So it shows you kind of in real time, you know, which direction you're pointing in. And it, the interesting thing about it is it shows you sort of where the sun, where the sun's rising and you know where it's getting dark as you can see so the phone's turning around it's nighttime pretty soon around here so and if you wanted to you could put in the towns and it will actually load the towns I don't think it's gonna show it here you'd have to restart it for it to do it so I'm not gonna show you but it's kinda of neat it shows you this artificial horizon line um, so you basically just point it and I can tell you that it is quite accurate for the most part that is 4d compass uh, plan planimeter is uh, just an app that you would use for measuring the area of a certain place. So I wanted to measure the area. No, let's not do this. So it basically is measuring the area of whatever points you plug in there. So it could be useful for agriculture, something like that. Backcountry Navigator is probably the best backcountry GPS I've application that I've used. And one thing to remember with GPS apps is that you have to download the maps prior to to using the service gps will always work uh, you can always make waypoints on any on any uh, texture surface on any background but you know to have a good map is very helpful if not necessary so what i have here is uh, i've downloaded maps of the entire rocky mountains and that's come up to about two gigabytes and uh, so it gives you you know shows you all the topography the the altitude the rivers major you know sort of landmarks roadways um, things of that nature so it's very useful very easy to use <clears throat> cost 10 bucks but worth every penny I've used it in the bush in the back country uh, as far away from cell towers as could possibly be and it's worked perfectly.
excuse me, <coughs> Maps with Me is another video or another um, application that Urban Prepper introduced me to. And essentially what it is, it allows you to download maps. Now the problem with Google Maps is that you can only access them while the grid is up. <clears throat> so when the grid's not up, good luck getting Google Maps. So the great thing with Maps with me is that you can download those apps in advance and utilize them in conjunction with your GPS. And chances are, you know, uh, GPS <clears throat> would still be uh, functioning even though you know a lot of uh, a lot of uh, cell phone services might be disconnected uh, GPS is independent of that so chances are that would still exist in a grid down scenario um, in terms of tools and gadgetry <coughs> Morris code transmitter so what you do here is you just type in a message there are three people in our party we need food and then you would just click on transmit code and it would flash utilizing the cameras flash it would uh, send out the Morse code signal there's also apps and this one does have sound also so you can transmit the light and you can transmit in the form of sound also if you wanted to <clears throat>